Okay, finally got the drone fixed, so I've got some epic footage that I'm gonna splice into this video. But, we're not done yet. So here I am, trying to line up the striping on the side of the trailer. I think that looks good. What do you think? Getting a little better at filming myself while riding at the same time. A little tricky, definitely some risks. I decided to follow the Ministry of Transportation guidelines using this DOT high visibility tape and side markers in all the right places. And of course, it makes sense, right? You wanna be seen out there. If a transport truck is gonna run me off the road, let's make sure it's on purpose. I thought I'd try to score the tape line with this utility knife, but it was not really making much of a difference. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna do this. <laughs> this is gonna take forever. But I think it's on pretty tight. It's because it says cure time 24 hours, but that's really the dry time. Mm, and she's... She said for it to fully harden, where you can't scratch it off easily, you have to wait 30 days. I didn't know that. Next up, I'm gonna install the porch light. I decided not to put it directly over the door because I don't want all the insects attracted to the light and be right where the door is gonna be open. So I figure that will be a little less of an issue, maybe not much, if I put it to the left of the door. Drilling holes for the rear side markers. Originally I bought these cheap ones on Amazon, but they had this epoxy that they used to waterproof the wires where they enter on the rear and that made it impossible to flush mount these using my 3M tape. I tried to cut it off with my utility knife, but it wasn't, wasn't working, so I ended up going to Canadian Tire and getting some more expensive, but higher quality lights. I also bought these reflectors, two red ones for the back, two orange ones for the front. I keep making the same mistake. I keep forgetting to solder on extensions to the LED lights, wire extensions before installing them. So it just makes it really hard because I gotta get in there after I've only got about eight inches of, of lead on some of these light fixtures. How's that look?
I did decide to go custom full solar install. So I'm not gonna use these sun power panels and I've got a really exciting video coming up on this incredible custom solar installation that a company is gonna help me with. The 50 foot roll of vinyl insert ran out on me. I just needed four more inches. Luckily I went to this tourist RV sales north of Porto, Ontario. They were so nice, they just cut me off a foot. No charge. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just tension all the spokes. <clears throat> so at this point in the video, I've probably put on about, oh, 60 kilometers of test rides. On my last test ride, I heard some creaking coming from the wheel behind me in the front of the cyber drop possible indication of a loose spoke. So I'm just gonna go around and tension everything up. I also noticed that there was a little bit of play in the fork, but I don't think that was from usage. I think I just didn't have it tight originally. Beautiful. Yeah. So it was really funny, Meet, because you and I met yeah. on yeah. Fiverr. Yeah, well, and were you in India at that time? Yeah. You were working there, I reached out to you, and what was that software we were first starting? Freecare. What was it again? Freecare. Yeah, I couldn't... It was uh, like open source software. FreeCAD, it, it just did not work with my brain. <laughs> I was trying so hard. Yeah. And then you helped me, and then remember we were talking about skinning the whole thing with, with aluminum? Yeah. And, and then... And uh, frame, then uh, the whole uh, weight about... Yeah. Uh, Equipment with the frame. Uh, like how long it took to make this one? Like, since well, when I don't know how many hours I've been put into it. Probably. I think uh, we started from February. And yeah, just been putting it, putting it together slowly over the months. Yeah. Yeah. Are you an engineer as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not an engineer, so I need you to inspect this. Well. I was a mechanical engineer in India. Like uh, I did my bachelor in mechanical engineering. Yeah. But right now in the University of Windsor, uh, I'm like uh, doing the M engineering course in industrial engineering. I'm trying to have a long distance capacity, so 200, yeah. 250 kilometers per day. Per day. <laughs> per day, if I, yeah, if, if my butt holds up <laughs> on the bike seat. Watch your step, but you can come look inside. I've got the floor pulled up because I'm, I'm just doing the wiring. I've just added side marker lights. So, yeah. but it's yeah. spacious, isn't it? Yeah. You, know? you can sit there with your computer yeah, and do work and yeah. you can sleep and all. <laughs> right. <laughs> Insulation and uh, the small gaps between the edges. Like, it's like perfectly machined. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> the welding was the longest uh, skill, yeah. skill to learn. Yeah. You have to uh, take a road uh, for welding and uh, just like at the all yeah, 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 it was Ooh, tricky. Yeah. Inside, like, it was yeah. it was really tricky to yeah. get the ring. <laughs> it's like, hard it's to do. very hard around uh, yeah. these seven edges. Yeah. Like behind this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was tricky. Yeah. That, that was, was tricky. very tricky part. Uh, there is a very less space for the heat dissipation, like uh, right. dissipation. Like yeah, I learned all about the heat affected zone. <laughs> <laughs> I made some real. I affected some zones with a lot of heat. <laughs> So relieved that my tests have been going really well so far because yeah. I thought well I'm gonna build this whole thing and then maybe it just falls apart <laughs> but it's been good yeah. yeah there's so much to learn all the time it yeah. seems yeah so yeah. by the time you learn this whole software system then there's another one you have to yeah. learn so like you have to be judicious yeah. don't you right Okay, so you're the engineers. What else? You know, what what else have I have I missed here? <laughs> you you did, did all the things very perfectly. Yeah, you did all the things. Okay, that's good to hear from you too. I got the engineer to sign off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now I can hit the road. <laughs> yeah. Like, at what makes uh, maximum speed that you drove that? Um, I've taken it up to 50 kilometers per hour, and it feels actually very stable. 
at high speeds. Is there any vibration? No. Yeah. Quiet, no vibration. It's fully suspended, right? Front suspension and then torsion suspension. So between the, like the torsion suspension, it's just, it's just in rubber, right? So it's just yeah. that it doesn't make any sound. It's really quiet. It absorbs all the small, medium bumps. <laughs> I love electric bikes with the kind of controllers that allow it to operate silently. The only thing you hear is, is the sound of the wheels, the rubber on the road. Oops, that's okay. I don't know what that was. But the knurling, if I put that knurling on this for more grip, and then just essentially more force. Yeah, friction force, exactly. And I think it should be fine because even like this, it's almost good enough. So I'm hoping with those two changes, it'll eliminate any problems. Because when I'm on camping on a hill or on a mountain, there's enough travel that I can actually jack this right up off the ground. So the wheels are off the ground. So I can totally level it on, on lots of different terrains. But I need, to, I need to make sure that they're really strong and not gonna move. But other than that, everything else is going really well. The electrical components, the motors. Um, I might need to get a, a stronger motor, but I think actually it'll be fine. I'm running a 72 volt system, so 72 volts. It's hard to talk about motor wattage ratings because like, you can put 2000 watts through this motor for about five minutes and then it'll overheat. So continuous, it can, it can probably take, uh, I think it's 1200 or 1300 watts continuous. It has ferro, do you know ferro fluid? Have you heard of ferro fluid? Yeah. It's a magnetic and to disperse the heat. It helps with the heat. So they, they actually injected that fluid around the magnets, the windings, and it helps dissipate the heat faster. But yeah, 72 volts and usually pulling like even only pulling 700 watts between each motor is enough yeah, for, like, uh, for normal terrain. If I'm going up a hill, then yeah, the weight, yeah, you know, kicks a in. between torque and speed. And uh, there is also, uh, we have to consider about the battery capacity and how far you can go. Right, exactly. So it's just trying to find out what the balance is that you want. Yeah. So many people I see, they're just towing, and then, and then a lot of them only have two wheels. And I tried that, I built a trailer with just two wheels, and I loaded it up, and it has too much, it oscillates too much this way, yeah. and you can feel it's it on the bike, way. and you don't feel safe at all. But this, you don't even know that you're towing something. It's so big, but you don't even feel it. It feels like you're just riding your bike, yeah. and you're like, oh, <laughs> where it all began, Meets and Jeremiah in free CAD. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a nice giant. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm such a nice giant? Is that what you I'm said? <laughs> I thought you said I'm such a nice giant. Just for giving us your time. Yeah. Oh, likewise. You. Your time is valuable. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by and sharing in the excitement. <laughs> it's fun to share it. Have a good trip. Bye. So that's really it for this video. I'm just gonna let it run here. I've got footage of the torsion axle in action. I figured out how to slow mow it properly so you can see how it absorbs the small medium bumps. And I have to say, I'm really pleased. Now I'm using the Flexi Ride product. It's their 425 pound um, version. And the camper, when it's all loaded up, it will get pretty close to that. Now the axles are rated for uh, 425 pounds between the two of them but you have to keep in mind that there's a third wheel in the front of this so each wheel is actually going to be well let's just say 450 pounds divided by three so 150 pounds per wheel and then if you add that for two wheels it's 300 pounds so it's going to be well within what this is capable of supporting <laughs>